someone wrote a newspaper art article that said about a show that I had done and said Attack of the Acoustic Ninja. Oh, nice. <laughs> Welcome to Mind Control. The Come first on. time that someone referred to me. I mean, that's a solid nickname, you know. So, like. <laughs> I feel about that. Like, yeah, it's just a song name. It's not. Nope. Too late. Too late. Can't. Then I bought the domain name. <laughs>What fuels your creativity, Trace? Like, what gets you inspired? Do you mm. like the writing aspect? I mean, you've written a lot of your own stuff. Yeah. Um, we would always talk about filling your well. Mm. You know, like, what gets you your ideas, you know? Because sometimes you do kind of <clears throat> run dry, and it's like, yeah. what what it's fills kind of, that inspiration? It's a tricky one for me because I don't really love recording. I don't like going mm. into the studio. I'm such a perfectionist, and I love, <laughs> I love <laughs> playing on stage live love in front of people. Yeah. You know, yeah. I... I um I interact a lot with the audience between the songs. Yeah, we can and, tell Eric you know, was in that first show screaming yeah. at you. I love that connection with yeah. the audience. Like yeah. sometime in high school, I was turned on to a, a singer songwriter named David Wilcox. So Great like guitar him. player. You know, a lot of alternate tunings where he's you know changing everything up and mm. some kind of capo stuff. And so he was really he was inspiring musically. But um, when I would see him play a show. The arc of this show would take you on this like journey by the songs themselves, but almost more importantly, what happened in between the songs. He had these stories that would like, like people would be like, cry, all the audience would be like crying, <laughs> and then like they'd all be like laughing hysterically, yeah. and you'd leave and be like, what just happened? Yeah, well, how did he do that? Just emotionally us? exhausted you know? from his <clears throat> guitar. So that's cool. And, and so that really inspired me that like even though, though I don't sing I can still right. craft the arc of my concert in a certain way with with the stories like in story. between the songs that's and so cool. that's why I yeah. interact a lot and I have yeah. some meaningful things that I try to share and I have funny things that I try to do and right. and nice. um, and so that was big so so he was a you know a big influence when I play a show I want every every show to feel like even if it's a lot of people yeah. that I'm in like the living room with my new friends okay. and we're all hanging out kind of like this that's yeah. what I want a show to feel like yeah. And so I love that. And you know, when you're in the studio, you, you don't get that, that yeah. feedback and stuff. Is there somebody who you like, oh, that guy tells me? Because like, it's hard because it's all solo. Is there like a peer that you super mm. respect? Like, it's just like, hey, that guy's the best. <laughs> and then it goes from there. Like, I don't know. You know cause if, if I'm in the process of recording, yeah. then I'm bouncing stuff off of like the, the, the engineer and like, Different people who sure, maybe, sure. you know, that have listened to a lot of music and kind of know, yeah, you hit this too hard or this. If it's know. just me like trying out a new song, then I kind of let, let the audience, that's cool. you know, like I, I can tell from the reaction, the reaction, like, just stuff the like that. Yeah, that's cool. And then my wife, you know, she, she's always like, she's oh, so tired cool. of guitar. Yeah, she, she came in earlier. She's just like, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know she's just <laughs> No, would you mind? Are awesome. Would you mind playing for us a little bit today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. All right. I'd love it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that. Can I ask that? to call this show Everybody's Cooler Than Dave because everybody's got these Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I was talking about like kind of sitting on the bed and like the, the very first time I did like some of the, the one-handed, two-handed stuff is whenever I was just like kind of going like this, you know, and, yeah. and I wasn't even like thinking about it. I remember I was like sitting on my bed and if you kind of hit it hard enough, you hit the, you can actually it hear vibrates it, the right? string and then you kind of stretch it and let go. That, that's, you know. Dude, come on. So I started kind of doing it, and I remember, like, what, what did I do with I like that. You know, and I like, started kind of And that's the stuff people that. were like, whoa! Like, yeah. you actually sit and like, oh! Ended up, like, when I was trying that technique, I was like, I, I don't know if this is even possible, but it'd be cool if I could... You know, so I wrote like a simple song, and that's where like I, I did at a show, like at a coffee shop. Right. And people people like, oh, yes. People are like, oh jeez. Um, <laughs> and then I, as I got better at it, I I, I came up with um, like a version of Pachelbel's Canon. Okay. So I, I I wrote an arrangement of that that it kind of like 
instead of just, just doing the high part with this hand, the low part with this hand, it actually kind of switches up and then sometimes you're doing the low here and the melody with this hand and switching. But um, but, but this ended up on, on YouTube and that, that was like one of the first that was the things that kind of went a little bit viral. Yeah, and, uh, got a little more traction. I mean, 